In this tutorial, we're looking at the myth of lower ab exercises and upper ab exercises. So a lot of people like to do these exercises to target certain parts of the abdominals. But what we're going to find out is this isn't necessarily true. And how we're going to do that is by looking at the exercises, then the anatomy, and then a little bit more about the myth itself and how it's been measured. To lay the foundation, we're talking about essentially two exercises. So we've got the abdominal crunch and we've got the reverse abdominal crunch. Now obviously the abdominal crunch, we all well know, we lie back in this position and we curl ourselves up, uh, bringing the head and the uh, sort of upper back off the floor. Now obviously what has been said is this activates, let's just say, the, the, the upper portion of the abdominals. So what's then been created is a reverse exercise essentially so this time the head is down the uh, the the hips are essentially being lifted off the floor and again this is said to activate uh, the lower portions of the abdominal muscles um, as I've mentioned this is a slight myth the well both these exercises are unnecessary exercises they're not that great for the spine, but also what we're going to find out is that um, they don't activate either the upper or lower portion of the rectus abdominis muscle. Some quick anatomy uh, with regards to the muscle that we know the rectus abdominis is this muscle here. It's the muscle that most people would associate with a six pack um, because it's got these compartments to it and there are reasons for those compartments um, and it's more to do with uh, compression of the abdominals and the intra-abdominal pressures rather than um, any sort of aesthetics. Um, we've also got the nerves that innovate it. We've got the intercostal nerves and the subcostal nerve. So this is T7 to 11 and then T12. So if we come over here what we can see are the intercostal nerves which are essentially the muscles of sort of where the ribs are and then subcostal which will be underneath that is the second one and then we get into the lumbar and the sacral plexus um, which will start to talk about um, sort of lower back pain uh, but we aren't going to be talking about that today and what it has been said is all sections are activated together at similar levels. So what you might think is that when we do an abdominal crunch we're getting these sort of top portions, when we do the reverse crunch we're getting these lower portions. Unfortunately that's not necessarily true because what has been said is all sections are activated together at similar levels and if you want to read about that you can go to page 79 to 81 of lower back disorder um, and you can recall, uh, you can read more about that um, and him explaining uh, more about why that is. But what we're going to do next is we're now going to look at the um, uh, what is described and why this myth is a myth. It's been called a myth because of something called normalization. Now, you can find normalization and what this talks about in this paper here. So the, the importance of normalization in the interpretation of surface EMG or electromyography, a proof of principle. And then there are the authors. You can also find this image uh, in lower back disorder. But we're going to talk about what normalization is next. But first of all, what, what does it look like? Well, unnormalized crunches. So you've got in the lighter color, which is this one here. Uh, is the uh, lower rectus abdominis and then the darker line is the upper rectus abdominis. So these are the crunches where you've got the person with the legs bent and then they're sort of curling their upper back off the floor. So what we find in unnormalized crunches is that the upper part is much more active which would um, which would correlate with there are sections of the abdominals and the um, uh, the the regular crunches 
create more activity in the upper. So therefore, we would, if we want to activate this lower one, this lower abdominals, which you can see is much further down here with regards to activation, we would think, well, okay, we need to create the opposite exercise, which is, as was shown, upper back on the floor, hips up, and then you've got the legs in that position. So we're curling up using the upper. But what then happens when we normalize the crunches? So when we normalize how it's being read, which is here, what we find is that they are much more equal. So you can see the dark line of the uh, upper and the lighter line of the lower is actually much more normal and much more um, consistent with each other. So that shows that normal crunches activates the upper and the lower compartments of the rectus abdominis much more equally than is actually being shared out in the industry. And the reason why I call many core exercises unnecessary is for this very reason. Many people may like doing them and they can do them. I'm not saying don't do them. You can do them if you want to do them. But what I am saying is the, 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 the knowledge and the foundation on which these exercises are built is crumbly. It's not very stable. It's not very strong. So this is a reason why I've taken these types of exercises out of my training, out of my online workouts, um, and implemented them with much more um, effective and efficient exercises for the core muscles. So what is normalization and what is it that's showing us that the upper and the lower parts of the rectus abdominis are working equally through, um, through these exercises? Well, essentially, it's a standardized contraction. So this quote here comes from um, an article which I've put the link in the description so you can go and read it. Um, but essentially, it needs to get a baseline contraction. So it reads, to be able to compare EMG activity in the same muscle on different days or in different individuals, or to compare EMG activity between muscles, the EMG must be normalized. Normalization of the EMG signal is usually performed by dividing the EMG signals during a task by a reference EMG value attained, obtained from the same muscle. By normalizing the reference EMG value collected using the same electrode configuration, factors that affect EMG signals during the task uh, and the reference contraction are the same. Therefore, one can validly obtain relative um, measure of the uh, activation compared to the reference value. So that's basically a long way of saying we need a standardized contraction. So we need a reference point. And as uh, Dr. McGill says in Lower Back Disorder, which again, you can read from page uh, 79 uh, to 81, he says that many uh, studies that have been done in this area or many information that has been collected in this area hasn't gone through this normalization uh, or standardizing of contraction. It's just showing an unnormalized thing, which is then giving slightly um, uh, inconsistent information with what's actually true. So it's very important, again, um, sort of knowing this information because it takes us to help us understand exercise a little bit more, muscular activity a little bit more, um, and we're not just training on um, uh, anecdotal information that someone that we know that's popular has said that we think is right and that we go and follow them. So it's, um, it's about finding this correct information um, or better information to be able to make better decisions and better uh, exercise selections. So hopefully this has been helpful, hopefully it's been insightful, hopefully it's been giving you a better idea of um, how to go about selecting exercises that you do. Uh, so many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from Christopher Training. I'll speak to you in the next tutorial.